Hello students. Today we will talk about Etruscan art. The period is from 1000 to 100 BC. In this lesson our objectives are acquaint the students about the significance of Etruscan art and architecture in the said period. Understand in detail about the different periods in Etruscan history and circumstances that led to the production of art. Appreciate the art and architecture of the said period. The component of this chapter are introduction, funerary art, sarcophagy, towns, architecture, pottery and sculpture. Let us begin with the introduction. The Etruscans lived in Etruria in Italy during the Bronze and the Iron Ages. Etruscan civilization flourished between circa 1000 and 100 BC and was contemporary with the Greek culture. Beginning in the 8th century BC, Greeks established colonies on the mainland and in Sicily. From the 7th century BC, Etruscans probably related to the Villanovans gained control of the north and Etruria. It reached its zenith during the 6th century BC when their city-states controlled central Italy. Etruria, modern Tuscany, occupied the west central part of the Italian peninsula. It was bordered on the south by the Tiber River, which runs through Rome and on the north by the Arno River. Etruscan's culture is significant in its own ways because its relationship to Greece and Rome. Etruscan wealth came from fertile soil and an abundance of metal ore. Both farmers and metal workers, the Etruscans were also sellers and merchants and they exploited their resources in trade with Greeks and with other people of the Eastern Mediterranean. Etruscan artists knew and drew inspiration from Greek and Near Eastern art, assimilating such influences to create a distinctive Etruscan style. Let us look at the geographical spread of the Etruscans. Let us also first look into the funerary art of the Etruscans. Etruscan arts were strongly influenced by their trading relationship with Greece. Although, like the Egyptians, but unlike the Greeks, they believed in an afterlife. This led to the employment of many Etruscan painters and sculptors by the nobility who commissioned tomb paintings, that is, tomb of leopards, circa 480 BC, and sometimes an ornate sarcophagus, that is, sarcophagus de Sposi, circa 550 BC, to elaborate their passage to the later life. Their gods were of a mysterious nature and men had a profound dread of the fate awaiting them after death. In this context, it is understandable that their art was primarily an art of the tomb. A kind of magic survival had to be secured for the dead in their final resting place and then, according to later belief, 
in the shadowy world of heads this funerary cult was observed with the minutest attention to detail and etruscan art itself seemed to have no other end in view the portrait immortalized the dead man's features and so rested him from the powers of darkness on a burial own from chusi a copy of the dead man's face in the form of a bronze mask is affixed to the vessel later the head was carved and made into the own slit this gave way to real statue as we shall see in the next figure many scenery owns took the form of houses and thus provide a glimpse of etruscan domestic architecture and iron age owned from the villanovan civilization for example is in the form of a circular hut and the first known house type in the central italy it consists of a single room enclosed by a circular wall and has thatched roof supported by interior vertical post a later example of a house shaped in cinerary or probably represented an upper class house or a palace for it has an elegant symmetrical facade with an arched doorway and second story gallery and now for the sarcophagi in the development of the new funerary iconography the artist created monumental sculpture in the sarcophagi of wealthy individuals In this figure a painted terracotta sarcophagus is in the form of a dining couch like the urns it has made to contain cremated remains rather than the bodies of the deceased a married couple is shown on a similar plane showing similar status long stylized hair a smile with corresponding raised cheekbones upwardly slanting eyes elegant curves finely pleated drapery almond shaped eyes indicate greek influence but they have no sense of skeletal structure and stoop abruptly at the waist indicating the etruscan's preference for stylistic effects over anatomical accuracy the sharp bend at the waist and the animated gestures create an illusion of lively sociable dinner companions very much alive as if to deny the fact of their death let us look at some more examples
Similarly, the frescoes which covered the damp vaults of the Tuscan Hypogea subterranean burial chambers are important as religious symbols. They depict the funeral feast. They also portray the occupations and pleasures of his earthly life. And most of all, they give concrete shape to his life in the next world. Let us talk about cities now. Since their attention was more on the tombs and afterlife, the Etruscans paid less attention to the embellishment of their towns. The Etruscans adopted the Greek street plan used at Greek colonial sites in Italy. But ideal town planning was difficult to impose on the older cities of Etruria, which had grown from Villanovan villages. The emulation was from Greece but with a difference. Two main streets one usually running north, south, and the other east-west divided the city into quarters. With the town's business district centered at their interaction, Greek inspiration prevailed in Etruria during the period of archaic style, circa 600 to 475 BCE. Corinthian, Ionian and Attic styles in turn dominated the test of the Etruscan city-states, where local artistic styles were now very individual. Throughout the seven centuries of their individual artistic expression, Etruscans were dependent upon foreign inspiration principally that of the Greeks. Thus, the major styles of Etruria are called by the same names as those of Greece. But whereas the Greek styles grew organically, reflecting their historical, social and intellectual background, the Etruscans accepted outward forms without always assimilating inner content. It is hard to find a parallel in the history of art for the consistent Etruscan borrowing of Greek style. Yet, they were not shallow imitators. They were sensitive to the beauty of Greek visual arts and proved themselves most able craftsmen. They used Greek art forms styles, themes and even details, but were always selective, adapting them to the Etruscan conventions to express Etruscan test, often in the idiom of a single city-state. What were they doing in terms of architecture? For large-scale architecture, the Etruscans turned to Greece for inspiration. They erected temples with open-air centuries and sacred precincts. Later, Etruscan temples did not have pediments, but only gabled porches. Etruscan architects used vettel and daub construction for the superstructure by reinforcing branches, vettel, with clay and mud daub. Stone was used only for podium. Roofs were titles and decorative sculpture was made of terracotta. The temple of Apollo at Valley has been reconstructed according to Etruscan temple proportions described by Vitruvius, 30 BC to AD 14, a Roman architect and engineer of Augustan period. In addition 
to the plan, the Etruscan incorporated the Greek wooden roof and pronaos. In contrast to th those in Greek temples, however, these are set on a high podium rather than on steps, and the side walls are solid. This arrangement emphasizes the entrance wall as being at the front of the temple, whereas the Greeks' use of colonnaded walls minimizes the distinction between front and sides. It also gives Etruscan temples a heavier, more massive quality than their Greek counterparts. Although Etruscan temples were simple in form, they were embellished with dazzling displays of painting and terracotta sculpture. The temple roof rather than the pediment served as a base for large statue groups. Etruscan artists excelled at the imposing technical challenge of making huge terracotta figures for placement on temples. Let us turn to pottery and sculpture. Economic prosperity and social interaction led to the Etruscan adopting and adapting certain Greek social customs such as the symposium, drinking party, and the practice of banqueting in a reclining position for which they imported thousands of Greek crosses. Now scenes and characters from Greek mythology liberally populate Etruscan imagery. Like the Greeks, Etruscan artists cast bronze by the lost wax method. The bronze bonded chimera from the 4th century BC depicts the mythological monster with a lion's body, a serpent's tail, and a god's head here emerging from the back. Its pose convincingly indicates a readiness to spring toward an adversary. The hair along the spine literally stands on end. Fear is suggested through the open mouth, turned head, and raised eyebrows. At first, archaic bronze figures were somewhat rigid with stress on vertical lines, but they soon acquired new characterization and validity. Vast statuettes of recognizable gods appear and to decorate the increasing number of households, bronzes, warriors, athletes, dancers, and other types are often shown in vigorous action. The emphasis on expressive detail, such as the head or hands, is characteristic of the Etruscans, while the flowing lines, long heads, and plump bodies indicate Ionian test. Let us look at some pottery examples. Let us talk about jewelry now. The Etruscan take their place in the history of the visual art as vital intermediaries between the Greeks and Romans. 
profiting from the rich resources of their homeland. The Etruscans welcomed a civilization of their Greek contemporaries. During Rome's early development, the neighboring Etruscans were an acknowledged source of culture and introduced many Hellenic forms to Rome. A natural talent for draftsmanship shines out of Etruscan achievements in the minor arts and especially in engraving on precious metals and bronze. It was probably in the field of plate and jewelry that the Etruscans exploited their technical skill and decorative taste to the utmost. Treasures from tombs of the orientalized period have a characteristic richness and elaboration. And some Etruscan jewelry of the 7th and 6th centuries truly represents a high watermark of art. Let us look at some images now. Let me conclude by talking about the role of women in Etruscan art. The Etruscan differed significantly from the Greeks in their attitude toward women. Etruscan women participated more in public life with their husbands and held higher positions than women in ancient Greece. Wives participated with their husbands in banquets, banquets. Wealthy Etruscan women were unusually fashion conscious and wore elaborate jewelry commensurate with their rank. The bronze mirrors that have been excavated from Etruria were used only by women. They were typically decorated with mythological scenes and their inscriptions indicate that the women to whom they belonged were literate. The greater emphasis on women in Etruscan society is consistent with the prominence in the arts of figure of the mother goddess and other female deities will be beyond the Bronze Age. Etruscan artists frequently depicted myths in which women dominate men by being older, more powerful, or higher in divine status. The scene illustrated here shows the adult Hercules being breastfed by the goddess Uni, the Etruscan Hera, in the presence of male and female divinities. 